A 63-year-old retired firefighter with no history of CKD is hospitalized for abdominal pain and immediately discharged home with a prescription of antibiotics and an OTC pain medication. It took just one week for these prescriptions to damage his kidneys so severely. He barely made it to the emergency room alive. This is his story. GD is a retired firefighter, 63 year old, being admitted to the cardiothoracic surgery department at the University Medical Center with heart failure. Blood analysis shows acute renal failure complicated by metabolic acidosis, which is very strange because just one week ago, GD was pretty healthy for his age and for a retired firefighter. The day before Thanksgiving, GD took his morning prescription. A life spent as a firefighter exerted a toll on his joints and his arthritis was acting up again like every autumn. But even if his heart wasn't that of a young boy anymore, like his doctor kept reminding him, GD wasn't worried. He was taking his diuretics and his blood pressure pills, and he was avoiding eating too much pizza and too much salt. What was making GD feeling down was the passing away of his dog just a few weeks earlier. His daughter tried to convince him to get a new puppy, but GD felt that he was just not ready yet. The holiday season, however, was coming and GD really believed that spending some time with his daughter and his family would have made him feel a lot better. That truly was his best time of the year with his family finally reunited and his grandchildren running all over his home. This year, unfortunately, that wasn't going to happen. Gathering here, I've been working with kidney disease patients for almost 10 years now and today's case comes with a most important lesson. This case was recorded in 2014 on the 31st of December and was published on a peer-reviewed medical journal later in 2015. This case is about one of the most common medical errors of our days. You see, today, most patients age 60 or more have to deal with a huge number of pills every day. Researchers found out that the average older adult takes five or more different prescriptions each day. But the prescriptions may be many more than that, like in the case of GD. He had a history of hypertension, being treated with a strong diuretic, an ACE inhibitor, and a beta blocker, and arthritis being treated with aspirin. He recently developed a painful case of prostatitis that the doctor who visited him at the hospital was treating with antibiotics and some more OTC pain relieving medications. And yes, that's a lot of pills, and for those of you that follow me here regularly, that combination may already raise a red flag. The primary care doctor wasn't particularly concerned, however, because GD kidneys were really doing well at his last checkup. He had an unviable creatinine level of 0.8, very good for a man at his age and with a history of heart problems. And while his doctor was more concerned with GD lungs due to his occupation as a firefighter, it was his kidneys that were at huge risk now. GD came back home after his hospital visit and in just a few hours after taking his antibiotic and stronger OTC pain relieving medication, he started to feel a lot better. Just in time to set up the decorations around his home, he thought, and to wrap the last gifts for his beloved grandchildren. But something was starting to go very wrong with his kidneys and his heart as he took those extra pills the hospital doctors prescribed him. Two days after starting the treatment with antibiotics, GD started to see a foam on top of his urine every time he went to the bathroom. But he didn't really pay attention to that. He had too much to do around the home. On the third day after starting the treatment, GD legs started to swell. He thought that his arthritis was doing that because his fingers were always swollen already, especially during the cold season. 
On the fourth day, he woke up so tired he was barely able to move from his bed. Am I getting the flu again, he thought, or are those antibiotics I'm taking? But it didn't matter because the hospital doctor was very clear that he had to complete the whole treatment if he didn't want to risk the bacteria from his prostate to reach his kidneys. On the fifth day, Judy wasn't able to eat breakfast at all. Everything tasted like metal and it was so nauseating. On the sixth day, he was barely able to recognize himself in the mirror as his face swollen up like an inflated balloon. On the seventh day, his daughter finally came to visit and he found her father in a condition so dire, she immediately called an ambulance. Gigi was brought to the emergency room, but the doctors found out reading his blood tests shocked them. When GD tests came back, the doctors first thought about the problem with his lungs probably caused by his job. The heart of a firefighter is always under great pressure work near hot fires, exposure to carbon monoxide and other stresses associated with the job was for sure part of the reason why GD heart was now failing. So the doctors initially believed that was caused by the heart problem. But when they started looking at GD medical history, things didn't add up. The heart problem alone wasn't enough to explain why a man without any previous history of kidney disease was now showing a creatinine level of 6.5 mg per dl. Creatinine level is one of the main indicators of kidney function and in GD it was almost 6 times higher than normal, which means that GD kidneys failed completely in just 7 days and he had to immediately start it on emergency dialysis. But that was just a way to gain some time. They had to find a cause for the kidney damage and to stop it to save Judy's life. Now the question is, if the heart problem isn't the cause, what could have been causing acute kidney injury in a man without any previous history of CKD? Acute kidney injury or AKI is a life-threatening condition characterized by an abrupt deterioration in kidney function. His doctors used the time provided them by the emergency dialysis to rule out all the possible causes of AKI. So what can cause kidney damage so rapidly? Lack of blood flow to the kidneys was briefly evaluated and then discharged. There were no blockages in the urinary tract and the patient was still making urine. The tax screen came out negative for the most common substances. There was only one more thing to rule out, a kidney infection. NGD was having a prostatitis. He was even hospitalized in the same hospital as he is right now, just 10 days ago. And a prostatitis can be dangerous for the kidneys too, like GD doctor repeated him. Both the kidneys and the prostate are part of the urinary tract and bacteria can spread from one organ to the other if the infection is left untreated. But that wasn't the case of GD either. As the doctors found out, he was being treated for his prostatitis with a course of antibiotics and an OTC pain relieving medication. This is when, however, the doctor failed to recognize the medical error that was causing the kidney damage. So what caused GD kidneys to fail? Today, there is one more commonly recognized cause of kidney damage that the doctors failed to notice. This is called the triple whammy and it's very insidious. It's actually due to cases similar to that of GD if today the simultaneous use of diuretics, blood pressure medications and NSAIDs has been associated with acute kidney injury. We know now that each of these medications, even if taken singularly, may decrease kidney function over time. Popular diuretics include hydrochlorothiazide, furosemide, which GD was taking, and spironolactone. They are associated with the risk for acute kidney injury. Same for both ACE inhibitors and ARBs, the most commonly prescribed medications to lower blood pressure. 
And while they protect the heart, no doubt about that, recent studies are linking their use to a faster decline in kidney function. Mixing these two, a double whammy, is a decision that some doctors have to take for their patients when they believe that saving the heart is more important than preserving kidney function. And it wasn't a wrong call in GDK's since his heart was in bad shape but his kidneys were doing fine up until 10 days ago. But we must understand that the combined effect on the kidneys is dangerous. Especially like in the case of GD when these two are combined with an NSAID. NSAIDs include ibuprofen, ketoprofen, which GD was taking, but also paracetamol, aspirin, and more. It's extremely dangerous and it's what caused GD kidneys to fail in just one week. But GD's doctors didn't know about the triple whammy back in 2014. Case reports like that of GD were made and are still being made today in 2022 to tell doctors to always perform an accurate pharmacological analysis before the prescription of a new medicine so the patient doesn't have to be rushed to the ER. Research also found out that inappropriate prescription is incredibly common in the elderly with a frightening prevalence of 40% 50% among nursing home residents. So that's the lesson here. Get informed about anything you take. Talk to your doctor and ask questions. I also recommend to make yourself a spreadsheet with all the prescriptions you are taking if you are taking more than what you can remember and to bring it with you both at your doctor's appointments and to a pharmacy if you have a new prescription. Okay, do you want to know how it ends? Was GD, the firefighter, able to survive the battle for his life? Let's see. GD took almost the whole antibiotic course before being admitted to the hospital and while that may have contributed to his kidney damage, it also cleared out his prostatitis. But he stopped taking all his medications as per hospital rules and was only treated with the heart and kidney medications prescribed after being admitted in the hospital. Then he receives three hemodialysis sessions and that's when his creatinine started to go down. In his unluckiest moment, GD was somehow lucky. GD was eventually able to spend the festivities with his family since the nurse let them visit him at the hospital. After three weeks in the hospital and three dialysis sessions, GD was finally able to get back home safely even if he is now forbidden to eat tomatoes and bananas. Which is still a good news since more than 1,000 cases of triple whammy are documented every year and many of the patients don't make it. Guys, if you want to watch more real cases like this one, watch my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching.